What's up my lovely people and welcome to the second episode of Wait What? <laughs> the official coming out for love reaction show season one. Today we're going to be reacting to episode two. Um, I'm your host Sophia and let's just jump into it. All right, let's get this started. Coming out for love episode two. All right, before we do though, uh, right there in the corner. I don't know if you see it. It says Me Hint the Show. That's my podcast. Don't forget to follow, subscribe everywhere you get your podcasts. All right, let's get to it without further ado. Hello. How's everybody doing? Hi. Yeah, yeah. Hi. feeling good. How you doing, Amber? Good. What's up, yeah. ladies? Hey. Hey. hey, I'm ready to get it going. I'm ready to get it going. All right, here's your first opportunity, your first activity. Choose oh, no, we're going to start off with the first activity. I walked in, and they're all really beautiful. And I think I was very used to being, hey, I walk into the room, and people look at me. And now I'm the person walking to the room going, oh, my God, look at them. <laughs> Truthfully, in your way. Thank you so much for being real quick. I just want to say I love that there was a focus of like highlighting um, queer representation, just queer, you know, not only artists, but like designers, you know, every episode I feel like had a queer spotlight. And so I love that. I just thought that was really cool here um so stony um runs a company which is known as stuzo clothing it is woman owned it is black owned it is queer owned it is fire um, if you don't know about it already you gotta know about it right now but when she's not running her gender-free apparel empire she's daydreaming with the big screen because i just learned multifaceted talent also an actor so oh okay she put together the outfit that shows your best self however you like to portray yourself so however you want Amber to see you, you could incorporate much of this lovely line. The anxiety, y'all, this was hilarious. Just like everybody like, wait, wh what are we doing? So I'm going to pause it real quick because actually, so fun fact, we went straight into filming this right after where we left off in the last episode where we were in the pool. Literally, they introduced Amber. They were in the pool. We're having fun little tipsy and then as soon as that scene just kind of cuts they're like all right um next uh we're gonna pick up the next one inside so everybody come indoors and then we sit on the couch we have like no warning as to what is happening and so this is all happening and you're like what and then now suddenly they're like all right now you have a challenge 30 seconds and go <laughs> when i tell you my stress level was through the roof oh I was so anxious. I was so anxious, girl. This was, oh, good times. <laughs> good times. This was really fun though. Like the whole, um, these, okay. I was one of the last ones to choose something. I was just like, what do I wear? How do I put it together? What do I want to express? I didn't even look at the hats. I should have, I was, oh, it was a mess. But man, the clothing was so nice. Hello, everyone. You yeah, that's the one thing amazing. I love about Stuzo is um, they really Yay. cater to like everybody, to a wide array of preferences notice, when it comes but, uh, to style. Feminine, and I masculine, you know, just and freaking so. neutral. It's <laughs> yes, I mean, the super is great. I'm still nervous. Like, I was that, there. <laughs> no. I don't want to have to react to this. I was First so awkward. We have nervous, the absolute anxiety. sparkly yeah. human disco ball, Shira Girl. Yes. Woo! Yes, Shira. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Sparkly. That is exactly her personality. It's giving, yeah, it's giving rainbow. It's giving that. I know they place us in the box. Right? You all want to the same. I hope that you can feel that our souls are connected. Period. Let's Ooh. break the stereotypes. Can, you can we just talk about this? Can I just turn you around? Can you just show them? Look at this shirt. You better. You With bet. the red leather? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> say what you need, girl. Say what you need. <laughs> <laughs> I like my clothes. talking for me. What can I say? Oh, oh no. Yeah, I'm, no nope, I can't see this. Purple. What a bombshell, Sophia. Yes. yes. Sophia oh no! Purple. She's giving burgundy purple here. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, she's so cringe. I, I, I can't. I, can't I cannot see like, myself on television, you guys. This is so cringe like, for me. Independence Day. Let's go. 
Spicy. I do love the dress, though. I will yeah, say the dress. Too, for Mexican Independence Day. Yeah. Oh, okay, fun fact. I'm just going to pause real quick. I'm going to pause real quick. It was Mexican Independence Day. Um, and so I came in hard with the Mexican. All right. I came in with a sombrero. I was giving out shots. I had a little, um, a little, call that, like a whistle. Because in Mexico, you'll like go to clubs and like they'll do the little whistle while they pour the shots. And then anyway. I was ready. I came prepared. Okay. So I had like little Mexican Independence Day, little earrings, you know, it was cute. Nice little touch. Just wanted to say that. All right. Let's go back to my awkwardness. I don't know what to say. I'm nervous. Hi. I'm Amber. Hi. Hi, Sophia. Did I just see your face? You already put shots in my mouth, but yeah. Thank you. Thank you as well. Loosen me up, you know? I did. I did put shots in your mouth. Wow, a tale as old as time. <laughs> my name is Michelle. Michelle. And this is what my name looks like in ASL. It's nice to meet you. So nice to meet you, too. Thank, Thank you. Yes. The shirt. It's my favorite thing. Me, too. Yes, we got that in common. Definition of romance and love. I think I don't know. I feel like it's just oh, um, no. I can't hear myself speak. Yeah, spoiling someone with whatever their love language is. Mm, I feel like that's language. that's the best. Who just said love language? Right? You said love languages. You won. Yeah. Thank you. Period. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, my definition of romance is to be able to be in a room full of people and look at my partner and just be like laugh and just lock and know exactly what we're thinking because we share inside jokes with each other. Oh uh, God, this is awkward. Can we pass me, honestly? I don't know. I what don't... does love mean to you? You experience love. Yeah, you have. And how did it feel for you? Yeah. <sighs> this sucks. I'm gonna get up. Can love I get up? Am I hot? My face is hot. It's okay, you're, you're fine. fine. Love is everlasting. Trust, truth. Can I it fills you up? I don't like this. <laughs> I think Lindy was just checked out at that point. Okay, cool, guys. Can we circle back to you? No. Okay. I think Lundy was just checked out at that point. I think she just didn't want to participate. Um, and yeah, I guess I guess we'll stay tuned. We'll see more. Trans elimination of this competition. Mm -hmm. Yes, unfortunately, not one but two of you. We're getting into the elimination already. Whoa. I know. I'm sorry. I just met him. <laughs> um because we are in safe space Eep. and we didn't get a chance to yo i yeah. our jaws dropped like we I, had I no idea what was going on i think it takes a while for things like this to settle down into your body mm -hmm. that's what i think you know and so i don't i don't know yeah. if any of us are gonna know how we feel about it tomorrow um <laughs> but that i think is one of the great we certainly didn't <laughs> and I, I hope you know you'll continue watching because we'll we'll find out I feel it's important um, as a brown person myself to recognize that there are many different um, nationalities and ethnicities that don't um, get asked how they feel yeah. and how, how racism and implicit bias um, affect them and their lives and their community. So I would like to open, to open the floor up um, away from one specific word and more to what it is to exist in a community that is already small. I'm half American, half Mexican. My uncles are dark. So when we would cross the border, I would always go to secondary and they would like have the cop being like, is this your uncle? And I'm like, yes, this is my freaking uncle. Why so secondary is secondary inspection. For those of you who don't know, you cross the border by car um, or walking, but usually like by car, they'll, they'll choose some cars and they'll take you to secondary inspection and they will, you know, kind of interrogate you and ask you a lot of questions. Why are we stopping? And it was always an issue. So in Mexico, I'm not Latin enough. And in New York, when you know you're around white people, you're not white enough. Really white enough. Yeah. Don't fit. Anyway, and I feel like the north part of Mexico, the fair skin. She one pointed at me, by the way. That's know, where I'm from. We don't even have a fucking acento. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know if that qualifies. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. One thing that they did leave really ingrained, unfortunately, is colorism. And we have this, um, unfortunately, kind of uh, unspoken culture of like adelantar la raza, which is like basically you marry lighter skinned always. 
um, in order to um, advance yeah. the race. Yeah, I it's fucked up. It's fucked that, up. Because I'm half black, half Asian, and my dad passed away when I was super young. So I was grown up by my Asian mom and the entire time growing up, she would tell me, Lo, people are going to look at you with the color of your skin. So you need to, if you are too loud, it's because you're black. If you're not smart enough, it's because you're black. So the entire time, I grew up with a competitive type of sense because of the color of my skin. And right now, I'm telling you, generational trauma stops right here with mm -hmm. me. And mm -hmm. oh, I love love. No, I am a woman of mixed heritage, and I'm very proud of it. And, you know, my mother is black, but I walk through life with so much privilege because of my light skin. I walk through life with privilege because I live in America and because I am a brown person mm -hmm. from the UK. So I'm Absolutely. already othered. I'm lifted up. I'm given different opportunities. I'm considered to be smarter or, or but more. But it's the acknowledging uh, of the privilege or, that you know, like means so you know, much, than, you know, than black and brown women. That was a heavy, heavy episode. Jeez. Woo, how are we feeling? How are we feeling? Let's all just... Take a breather. Yeah. I think that there were um, a lot of great conversations here. Uh, some good takeaways, like acknowledging your racial biases. We have all been indoctrinated by society one way or another, depending on where we have grown up, um, who our parents are, our uh, societal norms, our socioeconomic status. Um, there are just so many factors as to why we may have the biases that we do have. And I think it was an incredibly important uh, conversation that was brought up and a lot of um, examples of how you can receive and give information. I think that Amber was amazing at very gently presenting information. I wish that Lendy would have been more receptive from the jump, but I think that she did amazing as well. Eventually receiving it, I think that she's young and it also is part of our nature to be defensive, right? We No one likes to be called out and to be called out in a room full of people when there are cameras looking at you. Um, and then after having been, you know, quote unquote, canceled on the internet, I know that that probably was not an easy moment for her. So kudos, kudos to her for receiving it um, and for listening to everybody's stories. I love the fact that everybody spoke up and I love the fact that everybody got a moment to speak on their own personal experiences because we did have a very diverse cast. I mean, everybody essentially, for the most part, everybody had a very different racial background. Um and because of that very different racial experiences. Uh, so I know personally, you know, I spoke on it um, on this show, but, you know, being a Mexican-American comes with its own trials and tribulations and privileges as well. I love that Jessica spoke on privileges because, you know, being on the American side and being on the lighter skin side, there are privileges that come with that. Um so I think that if we're going to have any takeaway, and I hate to be on my soapbox, I'm sorry. It's just there's a lot of good conversation that happened from this. But just everyone needs to be open to receiving information. Please listen when a minority tells you that something bothers them. Don't be defensive. Just listen. Take it in. Educate a little. Educate yourself a little. You know, ignorance is only bliss. It's only bliss for the ignorant. All right. It's not blissful for anybody else. So don't be the ignorant. Please educate yourself. Be receptive. Be empathetic. Um, and yeah, just, you know, be open to learning and loving one another and just being better for humanity, y'all. Come on. Racism is not dead. It's not over. It sadly will probably always be a part of society. But you know what? We can do little actions and little things to make big changes. Um, and I think that this was one of those little things. And I am really excited, really excited that they decided to air this without um, editing because being there in person, it was just such a raw experience. Um, the room was very tense and yeah, I was just, um, I'm glad I was there and witnessed it and was a part of it. So yeah. 
Sorry that we're leaving this episode off on kind of like a somber note, but I really hope you enjoyed it. I love doing these reactions for you guys. So please, uh, please tune in for episode three. That should be released sometime in the coming weeks. Um, yeah. Alrighty. That is all. Bye.